Let me give you an update on something that happened yesterday. Yesterday, I told you about a very brave teacher, a teacher that wrote to the parents of her students and said, there's something that is coming next week and you have the right to opt out. And I have opted out. I refuse to teach this. And it may cost me my job, but I'm not going to teach it. And I'm writing you this personal letter from my personal email account. So you as parents know I'm concerned and what my concerns are. And she went into it and she even provided the links to the videos that were included in this sex education. And she said it's not a sex education. It's actually a... uh, a sex indoctrination or relationship class. Uh, Doesn't sound like anything I want my kids in. But, I mean, if you do, that's fine, I guess. Well, she was afraid she was going to lose her job. Um, I was afraid she was going to lose her job. This was a big risk on her part. I got an email late last night from this teacher, and I want to read it to you. Glenn, thank you so much for reading my letter. Sometimes we as teachers do feel alone and wonder if we should even bother speaking out. First of all, I feel the same way every day. And everybody, I have the luxury of people writing to me saying, Glenn, there are millions of us that are behind you. We feel the same way. Don't stop speaking out. Let me do you that favor and say that to you. If you feel alone, you're not. You're not. It is by design. In fact, Cheryl Atkinson and I talk about this on the podcast that's out today. Um, I interviewed her for, what, an hour or 90 minutes yesterday. She's fascinating, uh, and she knows what's really going inside the media. But I went to places I don't think anybody's ever taken her uh, and, and talked to her about feelings and opinions on different things as well as facts. Uh, and I will tell you that we have got to stand up and stand together and don't feel alone. As she said yesterday, that's by design, by design. Anyway, she said, I'm encouraged that you advocated for teachers on such a level. We need our warriors by our side to fuel us forward. We need to know that we are more than just a few tiny souls. I am thrilled to tell you that after I sent that email to approximately 90 parents, I was called into the principal's office. Yes, that trip is still intimidating. To my relief and joy, my principal assured me that she had no intention of letting me go. She is a believer herself and was disgusted by the content of the lessons. She jumped through many hoops to meet my request of being removed from any association with the sex ed curriculum. Further, she did as much as she could to put distance between the students and the curriculum and provide the parents with the only pathway for the student to access the information. I am so thankful for my principal. To give you a bit of background, we're a Title I school. I'm a lifetime resident of this area Uh, We are living in the buckle of the Bible belt. She said many people in the area believe they're born with Bible in one hand and a shotgun, shotgun in the other. She lives in Oklahoma. She said Tulsa, being a city, is more liberal than its suburbs. I met many uh, folks who treasure their Christian heritage and ache as the destruction of their moral fabric creeps into their students' lives. Maya Principal assured me that my job is safe right now. I'm thankful for that today. But if things change, I'm ready and I'm in peace. As for keeping my submission anonymous, I deeply appreciate the respect you showed. Most people in the media wouldn't have blinked twice at the potential consequences of divulging my information. However, I am not afraid. With God as my provider and my protector, my, tr- my life is truly an open book, and I am okay with my name being said aloud to anyone in regards to this issue. I have nothing to hide and nothing to apologize for. I, I cannot take my job and my income, which is in fact the primary income of my family, to heaven with me someday. I will take my acts of love and answer for how I use the life gifted me. 
If you'd like to talk further about this, please feel free to call me anytime. Thanks for being a strong vessel of God in his service, Amy Cook. Amy, you are a remarkable godsend and a real light in the darkness. May your example inspire many others to do the same. And may this conversation that we have had without even speaking or meeting with one another, may it inspire people to know that they too need to stand and that they are not alone. In the peace of God and the peace that Christ has given us, especially at this time of year, thank you, Amy.